Okay, this is what you're gonna need. Your paint of choice, a measuring cup, a stir stick, and baking soda. And you can use latex or acrylic paint for this recipe. This recipe is so simple. I use the ratio one to one. So I have a quarter of a cup of latex paint and I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of my baking soda. This recipe creates a nice fluffy, grainy texture and I love it. And you're just gonna incorporate this baking soda into the paint and stir it really well until it's blended and you'll see that it starts to go kind of fluffy and that's when you know you have it mixed really well. And it'll thicken up quite a bit too. I've also done some tutorials on other textured paints and if you have a chance, you should check those out. I did one on coffee grind paint and also on sand paint. Each one has different textures and different ways that it paints on. Um, so definitely check them out and see which one that you like the best. This is the consistency that it should be when you're all done stirring and incorporating the baking soda. Okay, I'm gonna paint some of these glass jars from the recycling bin so I can show you what the effect is with this baking soda paint. This paint recipe can be used on wood, on ceramics, on glass, on any project, and you can adjust the amount of baking soda that you add depending on how much of a texture you want for your project. I find with this paint, it usually takes two, sometimes three coats. This first coat has dried completely, and this is what the texture looks like after one coat, and now I'm ready to put on the second coat. And now the second coat is completely dry, and for my last finishing coat, I don't like to use the brush because I wanna get rid of those brush lines that I find are quite prominent when you're using this recipe. So I'm going to use just a small piece of sponge and I'm just gonna sponge it on all over the whole glass. This will also give it a little bit more of a textured look also. And look at that, isn't it fabulous? Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to finish these off. I painted another jar also. They're all completely dry and I'm going to put some graphics on them. I printed off some graphics on some napkins. I have a tutorial on how to do this. I'll put the link down below in the description and up above. And when I can't find my own napkins, I like to make my own, especially if I want to put graphics on something so i've printed these off on my printer and i'm just going to cut them down to size to fit onto my jar and then we're going to decoupage them on with mod podge when applying these onto my jars i don't want to have the straight lines of the napkin so i'm just going to dampen a paintbrush in a little bit of water and just kind of make a ragged edge all around the napkin so it blends in better when I put it onto the glass bottle and it just gives it more of a nice finished look and you just want to be really gentle with this just dampen it just enough to make the napkin wet take your paintbrush around the edge where you want to remove the excess napkin and it'll just tear apart really easy once it's wet these graphics are available in my Etsy store if you'd like to try these on your own project. Make sure you use the code SAVE50 so you get 50% off the graphic or all the graphics in my store and um, download them right to your computer and you can use them at home whenever you want to get crafting. We're gonna decoupage those napkins onto the jars with my Mod Podge mat. I'm gonna decoupage these napkins using the water method. I find this method works the best when you're trying to apply to any sort of a textured finish. You're gonna completely soak the napkin and then really carefully just make sure you get all the wrinkles out of it. Um, it'll tear really easy, so you just wanna be very gentle with it. It will get a little bit of wrinkling, so you just want to make sure that it's nice and flat. 
and then you're going to apply your Mod Podge right to the glass jar on top of the paint. And you just want a light coat. You don't want to make it too thick or you'll introduce bubbles and wrinkles. So you just want to smooth it right out. Just a light coat, the same size as the napkin that you're going to be decoupaging on. I like to take a cloth and just dampen up any water that would be still standing on the napkin because you don't want it soaking wet. And the nice thing that we've put it on this little plastic sleeve is you can pick it right up and apply it right onto the glass jar and you don't have to worry about any wrinkles or bubbles because it'll go on nice and smooth. And you want to make sure you have it nice and centered and then just press it down and just work out any water or any little bubbles underneath and smooth it right into that textured paint. And then you can very gently, very carefully, just peel away that plastic sleeve and your graphic is left right on that jar. And when you're using a white napkin on a white paint, it blends in perfectly. Of course, this technique, if you were using a darker color with a night white napkin, you would be able to see the outline of it. So if you were going to do this technique, you would want to stick with the white paint as your background. And I'm just going to work away at the second jar. And for my top coat, I like to use a water-based polyacrylic sealer. And all finished, I add a few embellishments and some little tags that I made. And I think they're really cute. And I love having that textured paint underneath. It just kind of makes it look kind of rustic and old and gives it character. So grab that baking soda that you have in your kitchen, mix it into some paint and try this technique and you'll have a lot of fun. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever tried this before and make sure to check out the coffee grind paint and the sand paint because they're fabulous finishes also. Thanks so much for watching today's video and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to read them. I'll be sharing so many more DIY thrifting repurposing videos so if you aren't already following along, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and that will let you know when I upload my next video. See you real soon. Take care and have a great day.